unexpected rate of substitution uh, intertemporal rate of substitution is basically a ratio written as mt so m represents marginal utility and t is for the time okay so marginal utility marginal utility of consuming of consuming one unit in the future in the future at time t against marginal utility of current consumption current consumption of one unit so basically it is about current consumption and future consumptions okay so marginal utility for current consumption and marginal utility for future consumptions i can rewrite this shortly as uh, this is for utility at time t and this is for utility at time zero and investor will always prefer or you know uh, uh, will prefer current consumption more than future consumption so in other words the utility for current consumption is higher okay the utility for current consumption is higher so that means if current consumption is one you know uh, the future consumption will be lower than one which is let's say 0.9 in this case so margin utility is 0.9 so moral of the story marginal utility is always for time t okay will always be lower than one okay and also uh, this is u0 and this is ut right so that means u0 okay that means marginal utility for for the current consumption is always greater than marginal utility uh, for for the consumption at time t okay so these are the two takeaway points now this concept can be further uh, compared with inflation indexed inflation indexed risk free zero coupon risk free zero coupon bond so how do i compare this say what happens in a risk free zero coupon bond this is p0 time you know at time zero price and price at time one now here because it is a discounted you know zero coupon bond it will be available at discount so that means if the price is one at time one so here let's say it is available at 0.9 okay so that means i can say the return for this the return for this uh, zero coupon bond is equal to uh, closing price which is one divided by opening price which is uh, 0.9 so for one year it will be minus one and i'll multiply by 100 to convert it into percentage i will get 11.11 percentage now this is equal to the inverse of this is equal to this is equal to the inverse of uh, marginal utility at time t so that is 1 by 1 by at time t it was 0.9 right over here we got it at time t it was 0.9 so when i do 1 by 0.9 i will again get i'll do minus 1 to convert it into percentage you know when i divide 1 by 0.9 and I'll, I'll do minus 1 and then multiply by 100 i will get 11.11 percentage .11%. that means uh, this return from the risk free bond return from the risk free inflation indexed uh, inflation indexed risk free inflation indexed uh, zero coupon bond 
is equal to okay so returns from the risk free inflation index zero coupon bond is equal to the inverse of marginal utility so this is equal to 1 by mt okay so this is what it says fine and if investors expect worse times ahead their marginal utility of future consumption is further decreased related to you know current consumption so that means let's say if right now right now let's say mt i said it is 0.9 by 1 now if they expect worse times ahead then further you know the delayed uh, the the marginal utility for the delayed uh, future consumption will come down further okay so if they expect worse time then it will further come down because again they would like to consume more as they don't trust the uh, future consumption utility okay now let's understand this concept from the angle of covariance as well from the angle of covariance okay see for a single uh, priced risk-free bond for a single price risk-free bond covariance is zero because there is no risk involved so its price is going to be just whatever is expected at you know at time one that is p1 discounted at the risk-free rate discounted at the risk-free rate okay the covariance is zero so zero covariance now what is this covariance we'll see so covariance is zero if this is a risky bond let's say p0 is equal to p1 by 1 plus r raised to n this is for risk free plus it will have the covariance of p1 comma m1 okay now this you know p1 is let's say 1 and if m1 let's say you know the intertemporal rate of substitution you know is very low let's say instead of 0.9 it goes to 0.8 or 0.7 so in that case here it is one you know it is going in the inverse direction right the difference is very high so that means when covariance is negative okay now it is the difference is going you know very highly so when the covariance is negative that will lead to more positive risk premium okay that will lead to more positive risk premium because reason being when it when this this m1 this m1 is you know we have seen that it is equivalent to uh, kind of p0 okay so here it is so here it is equivalent to p0 so the p0 is coming down and so what will happen it will lead to higher expectations of returns okay so that means uh, uh, that means if covariance is negative it will lead to positive risk premium so let me write that if covariance is negative so why am i saying negative here it is one and here it is you know 0 0.9 so let's say more risk then it will go to 0 0.8 or 0 0.7 so that's why when covariance is negative it will lead to more positive risk premium because you will expect more risk pre premium so that's why positive more positive risk premium fine so, so this is the uh, relationship, you know, uh, in comparison to covariance. Okay, for intertemporal uh, rate of substitution. Thank you so much for your time.